Okay. Um, Ken, I, I think we could go ahead and, and kick it off. And I, I want to just throw out a proposal here that I think any kind of categorization or um, taxonomy just necessarily is limited. And so I think we should just throw them all into the same bucket together and just say, these are all, uh, all cloud native. Sure. I'm good with that. Very short call. <laughs> uh, funny. Anything else you want to say, Dan, before I um, jump into kind of the pre, uh, the earlier work we did on this? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I just say I, I want to thank you for the fact that you you kicked us off back in, I think it was like August or September of um, 2016 when I had first arrived at CNCF. And I think it was really valuable then. And in fact, um, I, I mean, I do think you have a lot to be proud of in terms of that initial work, I think, has stood the test of time quite well. And so uh, unlike what I was saying before, um, I, I hope that we're uh, looking at a tune-up here and saying, Hey, are there some additional details and maybe combining some boxes together or separating some as opposed to a complete rethink or, or redo of it? But at, at the end of the day, it's um, right. you know up to you to take the lead here. And then whatever six members of the TOC agree on is ultimately the, the reference architecture. Right. Yeah, definitely. And so I want to kind of do today was just sort of, um, you know, kind of talk a little bit about where the original reference architecture came from. Um, back before Dan actually took over the helm, which has been very helpful um, having Dan on board, we had this um, really ugly diagram in our charter that just looked like nothing that anybody would recognize as a reference architecture. And so um, some of the TOC as we were forming, they wanted to kind of have our first effort be to create some type of a reference architecture and there were a lot of discussions within the TLC early on about whether or not we should have a end user architecture or a more technical, deeper um, level of the um, individual components and systems that make up um, a, a, a true architecture, not just a reference architecture. And, um, and so you can kind of see that, you know, this slide deck was put together um, quite a while ago. This is what kind of drove the initial in user reference architecture um, and we kind of were, were targeting uh, you know very simple use cases of um, you know what is what does a cloud native stack look like and so we we spent a little bit of time looking at um, my mouse over there sorry um, kind of a, at the top of that stack you know what it means to be containerized what distributed orchestration and management means and what microservices architecture and um, those are sort of the three, if you guys remember back in, in the, the charter, you know, what are the, the three things that make something cloud native? It was those three, three things. And so we try to sort of say, what do those three things relate to in a end user type of reference architecture? And then we sort of ended up developing this sort of a, of a model where we, we wanted to kind of capture at the bottom that there is, you know, infrastructure of some kind underneath this reference architecture. We didn't go into any details about that infrastructure or what's needed or what's expected there. Um, but we did kind of focus on the provisioning layer, the runtime, orchestration management, and then the, the application definition and development piece. And so this is kind of the original and existing reference architecture. Uh, from this architecture, um, what Dan did, which has been really, really helpful, is he went out, I think I have it here, the landscape, yeah. Dan went out and, um, worked with, um, I think it's Red, it's not coming up for me, but it's, what was the name of the Red company? Point and Amplify. Red Point. Yeah, I'm trying to get this to come up. Hopefully it will, it's just loading for me, but um, we have this sort of uh, landscape diagram that it's just not gonna work for me. Ken, what, one more right. piece of context. I, I included a link in the chat window to the CNCF charter and I have the aspiration in the next month or so to get the governing board to agree to delete Schedule A entirely and replace it with that um, two paragraph uh, cloud native definition that the TOC just approved last week. Right. And so when, if and when that happens, that old um, 
out, out of date, like three year old reference architecture will go away forever. Yep, exactly. And so one of you know one of the, the the options we have in this group is to you know come up with a new reference architecture that replaces that existing one. Um, we also I think have the ability to kind of update um, that existing user reference architecture, taking into account some of the landscape work that we've done in the um, CNC that I'm showing. Hopefully this did this show up finally for you guys too. Do you see it on the screen? Yes. Yep. And and so we could kind of update the um, we could have two different architectures, one that's kind of an end user and then one that that you know could go more technical if we wanted to, or we could just um, we have that that's something we can decide. We want to decide today. But um, what I liked about the the work that, that Dan has led on the interactive landscape is that it kind of you know leverages, if you look on the left hand side, it kind of leverages the same high level aspects of the user reference architecture as we discussed previously and um, takes it a next level down, right? So it kind of talks about the different aspects of the app definition and development, and the different aspects of orchestration and management. Um, and again, going back to what, you know, Dan was just saying with the new um, definition, we can update um, both of these at the same time, right? Um, and then what I, what I submitted um, to the CNCF um, a few months ago, was was this right sort of a um you know high level picture of kind of you know thinking about um the cloud native architecture more logically you sort of get this model of there's really you know these these orchestration pieces these um components where you're trying to observe and 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 monitor what's going on and you have this optimization aspect which led to um, you know kind of looking at maybe this as a logical starting point that kind of pulls together the reference architecture, the the end user um, uh, reference architecture, and the interactive map, right? To sort of give you a single view of you know these are the three main components that make up the logical architecture, and you know here's how they sort of correlate to these different aspects that are captured in the reference architecture, um, and and so this was kind of like a what I thought would be a good starting point for discussion. Um, happy to um, you know kind of open up to um, to discussion now and sort of see if there's any um, any thoughts on um, first of all I guess the charter of what we want to do in this working group and then secondly we can get into um, you know if there are some people who have other ideas they'd like to share we could start you know collecting those ideas and communicating them when we meet. Um, every two weeks. So I guess I'll start off with kind of the, the charter. Any Anyone have any um, suggestions on a different charter than we've outlined here as a starting point? I mean, for, for me, this is Jacob, but the question is who is the intended audience? Like that, that's sort of the first principle question for me because if it's a technical audience, I would suggest we go more technical um if you know it's a more of a marketing orientation i would go more broad but like who who is our intended audience is the first question I was yeah and so i i kind of in the beginning um when we did the end user reference architecture the intended audience was more marketing and more like the end user kind of like an education if you will of what cloud native means um and that's why I think that that might still be worthwhile to keep around, even though we need to update it. Um, just because there is, and, I, and I'm sure Dan would agree, there's always a need for kind of marketing and educating the community as to what cloud native means. Um, I really think this logical architecture starting point to me is more of targeting a technical audience and probably wants to be, we want to get more technical with what the architecture looks like and how these interfaces work together with cloud native. But that's just my opinion. I'm open to like what other people think of, you know, one or two views of an architecture. And if we, you know, we need to go more technical, if we need to go more marketing. Yeah, I mean, from the, so Kim, when we had discussed this logical architecture slide, you know, a couple months ago, um, I think the, the impetus for uh, sort of the design um, was to uh, take from to go from a market map to something sort of more functionally and capability driven 
um, right. which was intended to give people sort of a view of how these things plug into each other um, and importantly um, help folks as a decision making document in terms of like what the blueprint for a cloud data architecture could look like. Um, the, the challenge I have with market maps in general, um, you know, either as an investor or as a consumer of technology is that they're, um, they're quite noisy and there's a, there's a lot on there. And so by cutting it from a, a sort of capability driven um, architecture first and then showing that really, you know, these are, these are taking a view on these are the few things that matter and then these are the technologies within those buckets that, that are what matter um, is really the, the, was the, the original intention of this slide. Um, and by showing how kind of everything else plugs into that um, as not, you know, commodity is, is too tough a word, but um, sort of as a decision of secondary it's importance. Amazing. It's just being um, connection here. Can, can, it, can people hear me okay? Oh, it, you're breaking up from me, but it could just be my connection. Anybody else having trouble hearing? I heard him fine. Okay, it's probably just me. My work doesn't yeah, like and so, so, <laughs> so that, that was the original intention. And I, I still, um, you know, I, I still think like having a, a it, it's difficult in the context of sort of like a the cloud native computing foundation, I, I think, because, um, you know, I don't know what the, the appetite is to take a view on putting forth like one or two technologies as opposed to broader pockets of technologies. Um, I'm, I'm always of the view that it's good to sort of have a suggestion or a recommendation. Um, but I think for me, like this would, this would make a, a lot of sense, uh, as a starting point. Yeah. So just, I mean, I, I, just a couple of real quick points. I definitely agree with, I think that that was my view going into this. Um, and if you look at the landscape, you know, we do have like CNCF incubating CNCF sandbox and like Kubernetes is CNCF graduated. And so we do have, um, you know, I don't think we are opposed as a community and it's something that, you know, obviously I can now take back to the TOC at our next meeting, but um, based on our discussion today, I don't believe that you need to be worried or constrained to whether or not the CNCF wants to get more technical and define more of the, the blueprints and the components and the, um, the architecture around how these things should connect together and work together. Um, we don't want to basically, you know, select other than the projects that we already have in the landscape. We don't want to, um, whether they're in the community, we don't want to necessarily select one as the winner as, or as the way. But, you know, like we have something like CNI from the network side that is a reference implementation of a network interface, right? And so um, I don't think we are necessarily opposed to saying here's the way we see the, the architecture coming together technically. Um, but we, we're not going to sit back and say that this one solution, this one technology is the only way to do it, if that makes sense. I don't know if that answers um, anything you want to I'll add to that. The, yeah, just the previous question. I, I feel like the architecture in the form of the landscape has had tons of different audiences. So it's absolutely a marketing document. We have um, legal size printouts that we're giving out today at DockerCon. We have the trail map on the front side and the um, landscape on the back of it. I also think it's useful as a technical document where I, I've heard from, um, well, I guess I'll quote Brian Grant, who has both at times called it useful and at times called it the hellscape, um, that uh, <laughs> it is useful as you're sometimes as you're trying to understand an area like key management or uh, secure images or such to say, what are the offerings here? What are the closed source and the open source ones? And the comprehensive nature of what we've done, I, I think, has been useful. The overwhelming aspect of it, I feel like the um, trail map has been some antidote for, not a, not necessarily a perfect one. But I, um, uh, um, I, I, I think the simplest answer is that this architecture work has a variety of audiences. I, I would probably make a distinction that we. Um, have had an aspiration over the last year or so within CNCF and have failed so far to deliver it of doing what I've described as pattern work where um, Brendan Burns had created a document on talking about different cloud native patterns and, and we had hoped to have a series of blog posts around those and illustrations um, about patterns that work things like a circuit breaker or canary releases or sidecar and, and there's really dozens and dozens of them over time. But I'm, I'm, um, 
so I, I would question uh, whether this kind of a reference architecture can also cover all of those other sorts of things. And I'll stop there. Yeah, I, I definitely, I guess, I guess to me, Dan, it might be more of a, the end user reference architecture goes away and we leverage the landscape for that aspect, right? And what we're defining is actually the rural reference architecture that is more technical down below this. So that make, make, might make a lot more sense because you, you really don't need a landscape and a end user high level reference architecture, in my opinion. But again, I'm open to others, other thoughts on that. Uh, I, I'm, <clears throat> I, I'm a, hi, this is Paul Fremantle. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I agree because I think, I, I think the, the, the high level reference architecture is really what a customer's reference architecture is going to be, right? Right. And uh, I think that that, you know, these projects, uh, I think there's a need to address it from the customer viewpoint first and then help the customer see how to fit these projects in. And I think that the, the landscape is sort of, you know, because there's so many projects, it, it in, inevitably has to have a project first focus in a way. And I know, I know it's not really that, but it, it does have a bit of that. And I think that, I, I think it's worth at least exploring what a, what a enterprise, high level enterprise architecture would look like independent from this. Uh, and then going into the details of the enterprise architecture. Yeah. That makes, makes sense. So now we have, um, we haven't done like introductions. I mean, we should uh, have started with that, but um, before we jump into the there any other um, comments or, or thoughts anybody wants to share on on this first part of the discussion? I kind of want to second that last statement is that you know, the things that will help in a reference architecture are kind of talking about the things that we don't expect to change a lot over time, whereas projects change a lot. do change over time. <laughs> right. Makes perfect sense. Yep, I like the, I like that that view of how I look at it too. That's a good um, a good way to phrase it. You know that this is going to last. You know, do multiple projects that change because it's not tied to any specific project. So, All right, So with that, um, I know Dan introduced himself. I'll introduce myself quickly. I am. Um, on the TOC, I work at um, MasterCard currently, and I was one of the original um, founding, what do you want to call, like um, founding companies when I was at Cisco for um, for the CNCF. And so I've um, been working on a lot of different projects and helping a lot of different projects mature and, and um, help them get into the CNCF. So I see um, Joe is uh, next on the list. Joe, you want to give a quick intro? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you fine. Hey, um, uh, Joe Carvalho, Intel. Um, I'm a senior architect uh, in the software services group, uh, formerly data center group. Uh, and I've actually been a part of the CNCF for quite a long time, uh, back when Intel actually built a uh, bare metal scale cluster. Um, and, uh, and Ken, you and I were on a, uh, yep. uh, were on a panel um, way back then. So happy to be back in this conversation and to be a part of this effort. Yeah, lovely. I was very happy to see you join this, Joe. Thank you. It's, it's good to, help see you. to have you here. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's great to see you and everybody else on the on the call. This is awesome. And um, hey, Andres, uh, maybe you can give a quick intro as well. Hi, I'm Andreas Jäger, working for Zosa as product manager. Thanks for joining. And I, hey, Annie, good to see you again. You want to give a quick intro? Sure. Uh, my name is Annie Lai. I am with Huawei. I'm responsible for Huawei's all the cloud-related open source projects on the operations side. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get one of our architects to come to this meeting on a regular basis, but in the meantime, I am going to uh, be the filler. Great. Well, you're a good filler to have, Annie, so thanks for joining. Thank you. Uh, Chris Short, you want to give a quick intro? 
Sure. I'm Chris Short, uh, currently a DevOps consultant with SJ Technologies and a CNCF ambassador, and I'll be changing jobs here in the next couple of weeks, moving over to Red Hat on the Ansible team. Oh, cool. I have a lot of friends on the Ansible team. Tell them I said hi. <laughs> Will do. Uh, Colin. Hello. Hello. We give a quick intro. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. I'm Colin Sullivan. I'm in the I'm a product manager on the Nats team. Um, yeah, and uh, Nats was just uh, admitted to CNCF in late March, so uh, uh, happy to be here. Great. And then, uh, let's see, Craig. Hi all. I'm Craig Peters. I'm a product manager at JFrog. I work primarily with our partner ecosystem, and so. Yeah. My job is to figure out where what we do uh, contributes to all of this, the way all these tools work together. Great. Thanks for joining. And I'm not sure the first name, but it's Jay Cole, Cole, Cole. That should be Jenny Curve, and I'm sure you know who she is. I do know Jenny, yep. <laughs> she knows you. <laughs> yep. She's probably on mute, though. Yeah, is my mic hey, working? Hey, Jenny. Yep, it's working. Okay, um, sorry. So, yes, now I'm at Intel, and um, I, I, I guess I... I'm sorry, I'm could you speak up? I, I can't hear you. Sure, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with my headset here. I... Um, I straddle ecosystem strategy and architecture in uh, Intel's um, open source technology center, and I work closely with Joe. And, and I'm also back on the Kubernetes CNCF front, um, although before I was peripherally, peripherally involved. But happy we try to keep you close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for joining. And then, um, hey, Joe, I want to give a quick, I know I know you, but others probably don't, so. You might be talking on mute. You know, uh, I wonder if you're re referring to me, Ken. This is Jacob. Um, but my, my screen name on Zoom makes it look like my name is Joe. Um, I am uh, part of Index Ventures. Um, as, as I thought you were just some doing of you who met with, <laughs> As some of you uh, who I've met with in the past know, now we, we uh, do a lot of investing in a lot of different areas. Um, one of those areas is enterprise and within the enterprise open sources, a, a core focus for us. And in that capacity, we've gotten to know um, a number of the folks from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So. Um, you know, excited to be partnering with you guys on this one. Um, you know, looking at the landscape, uh, a bunch of, I'm excited to see a bunch of our companies represented, both open source and, and not open source like Datadog. So um, excited to see where this goes. Great. And then of course, Paul, you have a quick intro. I'm sure everybody knows you as well. Hi, uh, yes. My name is Paul Fremantle and I'm the CTO at WSO2. Uh, we're an integration vendor. We, I guess, compete with with uh, Red Hat and Mule and and people like that. And we've been, uh, I've actually been over the last few months trying to develop our own reference architecture around uh, what and how kind of enterprise architecture is evolving. It's 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 not as detailed as this. Um, so I was really interested to see and participate in in what the CNCF is doing, and and we're obviously very focused on cloud native uh, aspects and, and we're just uh, working on a new programming language which we, which we think is very focused on cloud native scenarios so very relevant to all this great good to have you on board and then uh, Sarah Jeans yes hello so I'm Sarah Jeans I'm with uh, internet 2 so internet 2 uh, runs and operates the U.S. National Research and Education Network, as well as uh, running and operating the Identity Federation in common for all the research and education institutions. 
uh, and I straddle our architecture and our cloud programs team. And Internet2 just recently joined the CNCF as a nonprofit member uh, right yeah, at the end of April. So happy to be here. Welcome to the, to the CNCF. Thank you. And I, the last one is Jay George. I'm guessing is Jacob. Is that right? Or is it someone else? Yeah, that that was me. But I already uh, I've already chimed in. We'll make you listen to me twice. That's what I thought. No, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure you're on here twice. So didn't want to miss it if there was somebody else saying with that um, abbreviation there. So. All right, cool. So I uh, apologize for doing the introductions late, but I'm not used to, um, I'm used to like running around and putting out fires these days. So I'm not used to um, running community meetings. So <laughs> I'll, I'll get better at it, I promise. <laughs> okay, it's coming back to me slowly. <laughs> um, did I miss anyone? I think I, it's like a phone number on here. I didn't have a name associated with them. That's somebody that had called in and already introduced themselves or not, but. Did I miss anybody? All right, cool. Um, and so, and, and you know, in talking with um, with Dan and then Jacob and the TLC, we there seemed to be interest in kind of using this as a starting point. Um, and and I guess what I'd like to you know we don't have to kind of go into. Um, a lot of details today. This is kind of like a kickoff meeting in a way for what we want to try to do with this. And um, obviously, it's going to take a few meetings to sort of get some, you know, momentum and to you know start making some, um, you know, forming some opinions on what to do. But um, in terms of these areas, you know, you have sort of these three main buckets of monitoring, service communication, and orchestration, um, and then sort of the um, the components that make up um, different parts of a logical architecture, security compliance, like continuous delivery, platform management, cloud, log analytics, API management, discovery and planning for services in the container registry. Does it seem like, you know, is there anything you guys have questions about with this or is there something that's missing or that you're not sure how it would fit into this? Obviously, there's a lot of details in those boxes on the outside of that that we probably need to get into and some definitions that are probably needed for the main boxes. But did, is there anything you guys can think of that's just missing from this architecture diagram? I guess, I guess the, the this is kind of like a, a platform architecture diagram. It's kind of missing the actual applications and 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 I feel like breaking out control and data plane might be useful but well, there are lots of different lenses I agree it, it doesn't include the application development itself or even methodologies or there right is that pertinent here though No, I, I don't know. <laughs> <It's a good laughs> well, well, so that's I, a good question. I mean, this is this is kind of an operational view of the platform, right? Um, what what is it doing in sort of static state, not sort of the life cycle or the deployment or topology? You know, what is it we're trying to get across in such a reference architecture? So the intention of this. Um, was to present a logical view and then take a point of view on what technology is really differentiated. Um, and if you were going to, you know, resources are limited everywhere. And so if you're going to invest um, in a set of technologies, um, the view is that these are the, you know, these are the three starting points. Um, and then if you hook everything else into these three buckets, monitoring, service, communication, orchestration, everything else stems from there. The, the context is broadened, I think. Um, this was originally intended solely for microservices uh, and was really meant more of a, as, a, as a blueprint for what we could do. Um, but the intention of this was to take a view on saying, hey, there's really only so many things that matter. 
Um, and those are the key decisions. And if you get those right, uh, everything else will follow. But I, I agree. I think that, you know, it's a good starting point, but we need to build upon it. Yeah, I think that continuous deployment leaves us a little bit of room maybe to add some of the important development aspects to this as well, right? Because, like, you know, one of the, the main things that, that um, I'm always working with my developers on now is how do you, you know, get metrics and understand what services and, you know, Associate MasterCard really worried about the security of these microservices. And so how do you know that the service that you discovered is the right service and the actual service you think it is? Out of curiosity, what is the, the medium that we intend to deliver this in? Just online or are we actually going to try and like print this out somehow? Uh, that's a good question. To, to date, we've sort of used um, the CNCF um, website as kind of a way to to have a clickable um, drill in to these different components. Okay. And so it's been very much an online sort of view. Uh, with the serverless work group, we did do a white paper. Um, and it, while the white paper is still available online, um, I would not be a Opposed, um, if we wanted to discuss having a white paper at some point, I would not be opposed to sort of putting together a white paper that could go into a little bit more of the, the detail around um, each of these areas that you probably wouldn't do online in the, in the image view, right? Okay, thanks for clarifying. And these, um, you know, me, I put like Envoy, LinkerD, and, and Kubernetes on this original one because those are CNCF projects that kind of fit in here. Um, I, I think I had Prometheus on there at some point. Too. I don't know what happened to it, but um, you know, I don't, I don't. I was just kind of using this to kind of help the TOC understand how our current projects at the time fit into this view. Um, and we had more than these three, but I'm not sure what happened to the other ones. I just kind of put up an old TLC diagram that to show this without trying to update it today. Um, but I, I don't know if we'd necessarily show any projects on this is, I guess, the point I was trying to get to. I put a couple on here just to sort of, you know, show what we could do um, in the TLC level with this. but. Um, don't necessarily view that you have to, we have to put projects in each of these button buckets, so. I think um, for the white paper, maybe it would be good to have some examples of what kind of projects fall into each category. So we know where the gaps are. Right. Yeah, ideally, kind of like we did with the user, the end user reference architecture and the um, landscape, I'm hoping that there's a pretty obvious um, mapping of, you know, what the reference, the logic architecture provides, what sort of fits into that, and then where there are gaps that we have identified that are still needed, to kind of your point, Annie, if that makes sense. Yep. If we're going to have these three different components, which I discussed, then I want to kind of just make sure that it's easy to kind of see how they fit together and go from a higher level. Here are the different set of projects that fit inside our ecosystem. Here's a kind of a customer reference architecture view of what you should be thinking about. And then here's a logical architecture of what really matters the most to get started. And of course, you know, all three of these should be living. The end user hasn't really been updated in a while to Dan's point, but all three of these should be more, should be updated on a regular basis. Not, not update them just to update them, but as, um, as we evolve uh, as a community, we should be updating the architecture to, to show that evolution. So, hi, I've got a, a quick question on this, right? So we talked about end user here, and I was just looking at the end user reference architecture, and it seemed like the end user who was running your platform stack. And here we're talking about the logical architecture for what is the platform stack. 
but there's another end user in all of this, which is the application developer and, and sort of related to the application operator that's dealing with that. Um, were, were we going to go into the space where we looked at reference architectures for that end user and the kinds of tools related to that? Or is it more going to stay with the platform stack rather than the applications that run in them? Yeah, so I think that's um, that's a really good point. I, I would love to take this um, high level um, layer that we talked about and, and go deeper for the application view. And then from an operation view, we don't really have that captured. Um, I think this um, this logical reference architecture we've been talking about maybe would be where that, that operations discussion would happen the most cleanly. Um, but it, it's, you know, the point you're bringing up, I think, is is sort of the point we've been discussing that it's difficult in a concise manner to kind of capture the the customer view, the application view, the operation view, and the ecosystem community view, you know, all at the same time. And so I think, you know, to your to answer your question, yes, I would like to, to take the application aspect deeper and the um, operational aspect deeper as well. Well, yeah, and there are two different operational aspects, right? There's the cluster or your, your infrastructure operation, which is where you've got yep. your monitoring operation. And then there's your application that uses the application that. I, and and those are really two entirely separate roles yep. that many organizations are different, different. companies yep. or different people within the company. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. And that's where, I, that's where there seems to be the most confusion in, in my discussions with, with companies. So I think it'd be very important to do that. I, I think that's a really good point that will eliminate a lot of confusion if we can have separate white papers targeting different, you know, audience, developers, right. operations people, end users, and they have a different architecture that kind of applies in their sphere. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be very helpful as well. Would anyone um, like to take a stab at um, one of those three? I'd like to get like all three, have, have like a small group of us think about all three of them. Is there anyone who's interested in, in one of those areas more than the other? You have to tell me now to send me a note and um, we'll start maybe, um, I'll send you kind of like a, a template that we like to use in the CNCF to kind of get started on, you know, brainstorming what the, you know, the app, app view, the op view, and the infrastructure ops view would be. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was just asking if we could use the reference architecture mailing list that we've set up rather than just having them yep. send a note directly to you. Yeah, I should have said that. Sorry, yeah, use the uh, mailing list to let me know, to let, to let everyone know what you're interested in working on, I should say. And I'll, send I'll just out, paste you know, the link into the mailing list. Yeah. But it is, it's a public list, so anyone's uh, welcome to participate. Um, I'm not sure if you'd seen the email that I sent to the list this morning, where I had some no, no, extremely no. Um, detailed, concrete um, questions or, or proposals about the existing reference architecture and how it fit into the landscape. And so I guess I, I was interested in hearing if you were comfortable sticking with that aspect of the reference architecture such that it would make sense to um, talk about some of our existing categories and whether we could split them up or combine them. And if that's a kind of additional workflow we could look at for the group. I, I definitely think that is, Dan, for sure. Good point. Anyone else have thoughts on what Dan was just asking? You might get a chance to kind of respond or think about the questions. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't had the check to really digest that email, Dan. Yeah, Dan, I um, I I I think you were. I don't know if you heard what I said earlier, but I, that's definitely my intention is to um, make sure there's an, a very obvious bridge between 
the uh, landscape and the end user reference architecture and the logical architecture. So, uh, Ken, I have kind of poor uh, Wi Fi here, but I, I did just paste into the chat window for people to see the guts of that message where when you look at the landscape, um, and I, I think most folks are familiar with the fact that we have this interactive version of the landscape that I'll also paste in the, uh, the link to that, that shows this, but there's, there's three um, boxes in particular that are quite um, big and have a, a ton of content there. And I'm, I'm not, it's not obvious to me how to split them up into subcategories, but I would love to do so if there were a relatively clear bright line rule. And then I mentioned three kind of lower level boxes that seem like they might be worth trying to combine into one or two. Yep. Um, but I, I'm happy to have folks just follow up on the mailing list and argue for or against any of these or any other changes. Yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense to me, Dan. I like it. So everyone can kind of get on the um, use the mailing list to sort of discuss um, not only, you know, the email that Dan sent out, but also kind of these three different views we want to try to create. One that's kind of the app or um, developer view of a, of a reference architecture. One that's kind of more of the application DevOps or ops view. And then the last one is sort of the infrastructure ops view. And kind of leveraging, you know, I think thinking about those three views in line with the categories we've defined in the um, the interactive landscape, along with where we want to sort of condense those into a smaller subset of architectural themes that we then define more specific um, components to make up that architecture for that. Um, end user that we're targeting for that that audience. Does that make sense? Cool. Anything else, Dan, you wanted to um to raise up? No, I, I'm just happy to have an ongoing email conversation. Um, I mean, we were a little slow getting this meeting slot set with the doodle poll and then getting the email piece uh, revitalized. But I, I mean, I'd love to have real discussions and debates ongoing. I don't think any of this is um, necessarily obvious. So very interested okay. to hear people's feedback. Yep. So we'll start with your thread and then I'll, I'll add another thread on um, sort of the um, the way that we want to think about reference architectures in the CNCF for discussion. And then um, we'll continue the discussion in email. And then we meet, I think, two weeks from today, if I remember correctly. Unfortunately, it's not. We actually just set it up as a monthly call. Monthly, okay. um, so the 11th. I believe. Yep, to 11th of July. Uh, yeah. We'll okay, but we, I mean, we can increase the frequency if, if necessary. I think we'll see if the email, I think the email is the better way to sort of start making progress and then at, on these meetings we'll just maybe discuss um and what i might also do dan is i might um, i work with chris on this but i might create like three eventually i might create three separate github repos for each of the reference architecture types we just we agree on and then um we can kind of capture um those architectures in git and then um you know discuss them and do pull requests as needed type of thing and define issues so between that and sure. the I, I might and start with um, Google Slides and then when we get some consensus m move it over to be um, pages right. markdown pages on the TOC list but we, we can also create repos for you if you'd like them yeah we definitely will get it's gonna take us a while I think to get to that point but yeah I think that's exactly what I was thinking which you just described with the markdowns eventually we'll start with slides and then move over once we get some some um, definitions and some some consensus amongst us. 
I have a question that uh, yeah. I have a question, Ken. So what? So when we produce the output, the three R reference architectures, what's the process? Do they have to be approved by uh, TOC or yep. is just absolutely? So TOC yeah. approved, that means TOC put a stamp on it saying this is official and we published them, correct? Correct. That's correct. Yep. So this is a working group. This correct. group. Of, okay. This is a working group. Um, well, just for, we're, we're not actually an official working group yet. Uh, working groups also have to be approved by the TOC. Maybe we should come up with some uh, euphemism for a, uh, a subgroup or a BOF or an ad hoc something. I, I mean, if, if we felt like this was going to be like a meaningful ongoing activity, we could charter the working group. I, it just didn't really seem worth the trouble to create a charter and other sort of stuff. My hope is that we could create these documents get some consensus around them, uh, get the TOC to approve them, and then kind of put the work on hiatus. But the, the mailing list, of course, would, would stay around. But okay. we, we can create a more formal structure if necessary. But, okay. but the, the key thought is that anything we do, no matter how great Ken loves it, it's not until five other TOC <laughs> members um, agree as well that it's a, a, an official CMCF output. Yep. Okay. And, and, yeah, and to be clear on that, I, and I don't even get a vote, so uh, <laughs> ten at least is one of one of the nine necessary. <laughs> yeah, and we we like to get nine. We don't. We we can get five, but we like or six. We like to get nine though. So we don't like we don't mind dissension, but we kind of want to have a unanimous because it's a lot more powerful, obviously. And we will, um, you know, along those lines, um, and I think you join a lot of the TOC calls as well. They are open um, calls you can join. Um, and mm -hmm. for, the, for the most part, we try to give a, a, a working group. And, and this isn't a working group, but they have us on the agenda after the working groups. And so um, there's usually a slot where we can kind of give a quick update. And so um, maybe monthly what I'll do is after we have our monthly meeting, I might try to get on the next um, agenda for the next TOC just to give a quick update into our progress because they are, the TOC members are interested in, in this group and what we're working on, so. Great, thank you. I think this is a very good discussion. I'm very happy that I joined. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks for joining everyone. I, um, are there any other questions? I, I've been kind of following the Google mentality of any of my meetings 10 minutes early, kind of like college, I guess, so. Um, any, uh, any other, um, I don't want to like leave questions. If there's any other questions, feel free to, to ask them now. But for those of you who um, need some time before, before your next meeting, feel free to drop off. Did I lose you guys or you, do you all just drop no. off? Just, just <laughs> big big thumbs up. Ken, and, and thank you for volunteering to shepherd this effort. Yeah, sorry it took so long to get it going, Dan, but I'm glad we got it going. Thanks for your help on that. That's good. Thanks all. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Have a great thank afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.